All right. Welcome back, YouTube. Uh, first off, I want to give a shout out to Mongrel Shark and Maker J. I know y'all have specifically mentioned me in your videos. I greatly appreciate that. Uh, I greatly appreciate all the recent subs and the likes and the comments. Uh, I appreciate all the feedback. Uh, thank you so much for all the positive feedback. Um, all that being said. I'm going to jump right into this. The, uh, a couple days ago I posted a video uh, with my latest Slayer, the Green Monster. I guess I'll dub him the Green Monster. And over the past few days I've been playing around with it, seeing you know what its capabilities are. And I, I quite honestly, I'm really impressed with this uh, single transistor Slayer exciter circuit. Basically, it gives... When an individual thinks of a Tesla coil, they think of wireless transmission of power. And in my opinion, I think that this device does this more efficiently than any other traditional spark gap, you know, capacitors, all that other crazy stuff that you need with a traditional Tesla coil, uh, high voltage input AC source. Uh, you don't need any of that with this. It's just a simple 19 volt DC power supply. So, I don't know if you can see this, because it's still kind of bright because the light is on, but this bulb, I have this here by design, um, I swear if I touch this bulb in the right spot, it actually will light, and it just did right now, from here, oh, there we go. Look how far I am from the torrid, and I still manage to get an out, this is a, this is a 40 watt, uh, 48 inch, uh, fluorescent tube, and I have it inside of this plastic protective thing, uh, just so I don't smash it. But otherwise, there's nothing else going on in this bulb. No antenna, absolutely nothing. Um, I'm not even sure if that's in frame. Let me let me see if I can move the, the the shot over a little bit, so we can get a better idea of the distance uh, that we're working with here. Yeah, that, that's pretty good in frame. But let me do this. I can go way over here, way over here. Sometimes it's a little finicky, but I'm not really sure why. But and then once you have the signal, it stays with you, and you can drag it out really far, way over there, and you see I'm still getting some kind of output right from my hands here, all the way at the very end. And you can see I'm still pretty far from the torrid. Um, in some of my later videos, and in more of a shop type setting, I do plan on devising a series of antennas. I assure you that if I put some kind of, or perhaps a piece of glass something behind here, and maybe focus all the energy in one direction, then have an antenna set way off in the distance and hook it up to some of these things and see if I can get some actual usable DC current out of it um, at, uh, at extreme distances like to me this is already a pretty pretty good distance if you ask me um, no antennas no receivers absolutely nothing this is just the high frequency high voltage energy traveling all around me being produced by the torrid um, exciting all the electrons uh, surrounding my body. But as you can see, get fantastic results. Um, I want to zoom in on the tip here because I have a few more items I want to show you um, that I haven't shown in other videos yet. I have a few incandescent bulbs. I'm actually going to bring this closer so we can get a better idea, idea of what's going on here. And I'm going to use this bulb as my light stick. I'm just going to hold this in my hand because I'm going to turn off the light above us so we can actually see what's, have a better idea what's going on. So that guy will light up in my hand as well. And then I have these. I have six of these guys. These guys do some neat things that you've seen in other videos. Um, but it's just the fact that it's, uh, I have not yet purchased enough items 
that I can load down on the circuit so that the point nothing will, will turn on. So I'm kind of wondering how much power is coming in, how much power is coming out. It's, it's getting kind of muddled um, because this thing is producing a lot of energy for what it is. So see if I can turn this light off and you see how it looks in frame. Well, that'll do just nicely. Okay, so here we go. Hey, check that. I got all three of them with plasma. Now, uh, I, in another couple of videos, and I guess we can start this discussion, I, or at least I would like to start the discussion on the safety of these things. From what I understand, whenever metal heats up in a glass tube like this, um, in a scenario like this and it gets hot to the touch, it's possible that it could be producing x-rays. Um, if anybody has any expertise on this or anybody would have better insight into this knowledge, I would, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, it's not like I'm always standing here holding this all, it's blasting me with x-rays, but if anybody does know anything about that phenomenon, I'd really appreciate it. I know I've been keeping track of my subscribers. I try to get um, get back to all my subscribers by at least saying thank you for subscribing and resubscribing. Re I see you guys have a lot of videos. Maybe some guy, some of you guys might have a better idea of that phenomenon. But this guy's on the floor actually, and it's lit up. You can't even see it; it's out of frame. But I have a big bowl on the floor, uh, and it's lit up quite nicely. But check this out. I actually have six of these. And if I hold three and three each in my hand, they will all light within reason. There we go. It's a pain to get them all close without getting them to touch, but obviously if I step away, they um I get brighter. It's just you have to find the feel. Check it out. There's a lot of power getting kicked out of the circuit. Let's see if I can get that even a little bit more in frame. Okay. So, some really neat plasma. It does get warm. It definitely does get warm. However, when in, in, in the previous video when I powered the incandescent bulb via the ground wire, the bulb itself does not get hot. Like if you actually plug that nightlight bulb into an outlet, it would get warm because uh, it's it's radi it's producing that wattage and energy, whatever the bulb was rated at. It's probably like a small 20 watt incandescent bulb, something like that. Um, but that wattage is dissipated in the form of heat. When it was lit in my hand, it wasn't generating any heat. So that's also another thing to take into consideration. It's just this high frequency uh, RF basically blasting out electricity. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to get, get this up there. I haven't shown this phenomenon yet. It's pretty neat. I haven't got this thing to light yet via you know holding it with the thing. It actually burns too much. It, it draws way too much current through my thumb. It just burns me too much before I can just let it sit there and light up. So I will solder something together on these things, maybe string them up and then string them to a ground and see how many of these I can light wirelessly via the Tesla coil because that will be a good indication of the power that I'm getting wirelessly through it. So these all have a wattage rating of 40 watts. So this is a 40 watt incandescent bulb. So if this thing is glowing bright at 40 watts, then you know that that's, it's, that's what's going through it. Oh, this guy's on the ground. But again, thank you so much for the likes, the subscribe, uh, all the subscriptions. Uh, I'll try to get back to all of you. I can't respond to every comment, obviously. Um, I got a lot, a lot more views in a really small period of time. So again, I appreciate the feedback. And thanks a lot for watching. I'll definitely come back to more videos. Um, I'm gonna start building up my equipment soon. Start as soon as I start getting the, the right tools and items. 
I'm in a shop, my buddy has a shop, I'll, I'll be, be designing better experiments to demonstrate these properties. So there will definitely be more to come. Again, thanks a lot. Uh, have a good one, guys.